Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the ways you can populate your list using Flutter. All right, so I already have a starting point for my app. If I go ahead and run the app again, start debugging, then you'll see that it simply displays the title in the app bar and it will display the body. And the body is simply using the text widget, which simply says display movies here. And you can see on the right hand side, it's displaying it on a Android Pixel device. Okay, so the question is, well, how do we display a list of something, right? Well, the first thing we need is we need a list of something and we don't really have a list. Now I can go ahead and create some string values, but what will be more fun if we create an actual class and that class can represent a particular movie. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a class called movie. And this particular class will have two properties. One of them will be title and the other one will be image URL. Now it is complaining because although we have created a class and we created these two properties, we didn't really initialize it. So I'm just gonna use movie, this dot title, and this dot image URL. So I'm using a syntax of Dart with basically what is saying that when you do want to pass these two values, which is title and image URL, you have to make sure you are labeling them. You have to provide a label also. Okay, so after this, what we want to do is we need to create some sort of a hard-coded list. Now, I'm not gonna type in the hard-coded list. I'm just gonna copy paste it because that will be super boring. There we go. And we will change the URL to image URL because that's the name of our property, not the URL. And you can see that the URL goes to, and it points to a movie poster. Okay, so that's all good. Now, how do we display a list? And there are many different ways of displaying the list. So I'm just gonna choose the easiest one, which is using a list view control or a list view widget. But the list view widget itself has a lot of different varieties. You can see that you can use a builder function, you can use a custom function, you can use a separated function. I'm just gonna start with a builder, which means that we are going to provide how many items are there in the list, which can be provided by something called an item count. The item count is the same as the number of movies in the array. So we can say movies.length. And the other thing that is important to us that we should provide is something called an item builder. An item builder takes in multiple things. The first one is the context, and the second one is the index of the item. Now the context over here is simply the position, the location of this particular view or widget in the complete view hierarchy or the widget hierarchy. We are not really going to use the context anyways, but that's what context actually means. That's the location reference to that particular location of the view or the widget in the widget hierarchy. The index will be the each item index. So when the loop is going, we have access to individual item or the index of the item, and we can use that index to get the movie. So I can go ahead and create movie equals to movies, and I can simply pass in the index to get the movie. Okay, so we have the movie, but now we need to return something to, to get it displayed. And if we're just starting out, we can go ahead and return a text. So you can return any widget that you want and we can go ahead and display the title. All right. And there we go. You can actually see on the right hand side, using the hot reload feature, it is already displaying correctly. But when you're displaying items inside a list or a list view in this case, it is a good idea to create some sort of an element that is much a little bit 
higher in size or much larger in size, and it represents a row because that's what you're doing, right? I mean, you're displaying a row of items. And there is another item that we can use, which is called a list tile. This tile basically represents a single row that you are going to get displayed. You can also call it a cell. And in this list tile, I can go ahead and provide the title. And again, I can just use any kind of a widget that I want. I'm just going to use the text widget and I can set the title. Now you can see the difference already. Now they look really nice because a list tile has a certain height, a fixed height, so you can't really change that. But a list tile does have a lot of other things that you can use, like predefined things. So if you want something to be displayed on the left-hand side of every single image or every single, sorry, uh, the title, then we can go ahead and use something called leading. Now, if I go ahead and display a text widget over here and say leading, you can see that it displays right on the left side. If I go ahead and use something called a trailing, then you can already guess that it's going to be displayed on the right side. Pretty cool, right? I mean, we don't really need the trailing part in this case. For the leading, we can actually go ahead and display some sort of an image. So let's go ahead and display an image. We have the image widget that we can use to display an image. Image widget does have a property called image and we can use network image and provide the movie.url or image URL. And there we go. So we were able to display multiple images. Now the images have a particular size. The height can remain the same. You can choose to put a different width, but I mean, if the height is same, there's no reason to mess around with the width. You can if you want to, but uh, right now we're more focused on the padding of everything, right? I mean, the padding looks kind of weird. So we can probably put this image inside a padding or padding widget. So if I right click and say refactor, I can actually wrap with padding. And now the whole image is kind of like wrapped with padding. So if you want to do that, you can definitely do that. You can change the padding if you want to or apply a different padding if you want to. That's completely up to you. Or you can even put the whole list tile inside the padding. You can also do that. So if I go back, I can click on over here, right click, refactor, and apply the whole padding to the whole row. So everything is now padded. All right. So this is it. I mean, this is how you will read some static information like a list of movies and you will display it right there inside your, uh, in your view. Now, one of the nice things about when you're using the uh, Flutter framework is that it will display the same exact way in an iPhone. All right, so let me go ahead and see if I can launch the iPhone part of it. So I'm going to close this. You can run it on both of them at the same time also, but I found that to be a little bit more buggy. So I'm just going to select an iPhone. And you can see that it's going to run on iPhone 11. For iPhone, I have found some issues with iPhone uh, or iOS 12. Sometimes it just fails. It doesn't really start. Right now, you can see at the bottom, it is trying to run Xcode build. Uh, I have seen it failing a couple of times, but you can see that it displays fine. And the great thing about when we are displaying these lists in an iPhone versus an Android device is that it kind of feels very, very native. See, I mean, it's that it's, we have that bouncy effect that we always like, and it is, uh, we are, we're checking out that effect. We're having that effect when we are running it on an iPhone. But if I run the same application on Android, we will not get that bouncy effect because that's not the native effect when you are displaying a list in an Android device. So hopefully after watching this video, you have a little bit of idea that how you can display a list of data in a Flutter application and how easy it is to build these kind of things, keeping in mind that it will run the same as on iOS device, 
as well as Android device. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel and my work, then the best way would be to become a patron. Simply go to patreon.com slash Sharp and you can sign up for either a silver tier or the gold tier. Patrons will get really high quality videos free from advertisement and exclusive content when you become a patron. And in the end, I mean, if you are giving this amount like $5 a month or $10 a month, you're kind of helping me out. And I love to create these videos, but keep in mind that every single video takes hours and sometimes even days and days of work to produce. So you helping me out, that's a great way to keep me going and producing these high standard videos. If you're also interested, then check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of courses on Udemy, Swift UI, MVVM design pattern in Swift UI, RX Swift, Flutter even. So if you are interested in Flutter, check out my course on Flutter also, and server side Swift. So I have a lot of many different courses when it comes to Udemy and when it comes to video courses. So I really hope that you go and check out my courses. Also, all the links for the courses is right there in the description. So make sure that you check it out. Thank you so much and I really hope you enjoyed the video.